Hello, this is Mr. Wong, and welcome to Wong Wong Bio. If you get it wrong, time to ask Mr. Wong. Today we will talk about task verbs. So, what are task verbs? Task verbs are verbs in the exams that would tell us to complete or to do a specific type of response. First, identify. Identify means to indicate or to provide information about a specific topic without elaboration or explanation. Notice that the key word here is without elaboration or explanation. So, wherever we were asked to identify, we should just try to answer it as specific as possible. The answer should be short and simple, and it can be not in a full sentence. That saves you a little bit of time. Some of the common questions that will be asked to identify are a testable question, dependent and independent variable, controls, data points, concepts, process, or model in the context. For example, if we were asked to identify the bond that connects glucose and fructose to form a sucrose, the answer should just be glycosidic bond. Sometimes, in a situation where we need to design experiments, we will be asked to identify some of the components listed below. For instance, a testable question is a question that can be answered by designing and conducting an experiment. Notice that this is not just some random question. It has to be a question in which you change one variable to see what the impact is on the another variable. If the variable is changed by you, the scientist, it is called independent variables. Dependent variables are variables that are being measured in the experiment. Constant variables or controlling variables are variables that are kept constant throughout the experimental groups. Using example in the picture, we can ask questions such as what are the effects of water and light towards the growth of the plant? The independent variables in this picture will be the amount of water and light because they are the variables that we intentionally change. The dependent variables would be the growth or the height of the plant after a certain amount of time. As a control experiment, we have to make sure that all the other factors of the variables such as the pH of the soil, the starting height of the plants, the nutrients in the soil, etc. are the same for each of these groups in the experiments. These variables have to be kept the same among all experimental groups because by then we can be very certain that any effect on the growth of the plant is only due to water and light. Then we can make a hypothesis based on our experiment. A hypothesis is a prediction or possible answer to the problem or question. We could hypothesize that without water and light, there will be no growth on the plant. To ensure that our observation is solely due to our independent variable, we need to create a control. Notice that it is different from a controlling variable. A control is a standard of comparison to minimize the effects of variables other than the independent variable. In this experiment, a control would be a plant which is provided with water and sunlight because this is the group that other treatment groups will be compared to after the experiment. A negative control is a group in which no response is expected. Positive control is a group which a known response is expected. Next, state, which means to indicate or provide. State is most commonly used to indicate or provide a hypothesis which supports or defend a claim about a scientifically testable question. If we were being asked to state something, we would have to write it in full sentence. Calculate. We need to do some math here. Sometimes we will be asked to show our work and how we arrive at our final answer. 
Here I listed a few mathematical questions that you have learned before. One of the most common calculating tasks would be to calculate the mean, which is an average of the data points. If we were to ask to construct or draw, it is most likely about drawing a graph, and it is very important to know how to draw or construct a graph to represent our data. A good graph needs to have these three important things. Correct plot data points, correct labeling of axes including units, and correct label data lines on the axis with appropriate scale. These are the three points that will be graded in your AP exam. We might also need to draw an illustration to represent a model. In this example, we need to draw a model using diagram to illustrate what happens after the enzyme works on the substrate. We can predict that after the enzyme had worked on the substrate, it will break the bond that holds the substrate together and release the substrates as two disconnected products. Determine. If we need to determine something, it means we need to decide to or conclude after reasoning, observation, or applying mathematical routines. Determine has to be based on what we have learned in our class. For example, if we need to determine whether the strain in this picture is a DNA strand or an RNA strand, Hmm, can we look at the diagram and find out more information about the strand? It seems that it is a single strand with nucleotides uracil instead of thymine. Hence, we can deduce and conclude that this is a single strand of RNA because only RNA has uracil. Describe. When we describe a concept or a process, what we need to do is to provide relevant characteristics and information of the particular concept. It's like telling a story, so you need a certain degree of details. For example, if we were asked to describe the bond formation process in this picture, we can't just say, oh, it is the covalent bond or ionic bond. We need to talk more about the sharing or transferring of electrons between the atoms and how they lead to the formation of the bond. Next, explain. If we were tasked to explain something, we need to provide information as well, just like describe. But the description that we provide has to have a cause and effect connection to what the question is asking. If for example, it is asking us to explain how, which means we need to provide analysis of the relationship. If it's asking why, it would require us to analyze the motivations or the reasons for the relationship. In this example, if let's say we were tasked to explain how hydrogen bond can give rise to the properties of water. Here we need to provide description of hydrogen bond. And in this case, it is a strong attraction between the water molecules. But we also need to explain and tell the reader how that attraction could lead to the properties of water, such as high surface tension. Make a claim. A claim is a statement or a conclusion that answers the original question or problem. So making a claim means provide a statement or conclusion based on the evidence or reasoning. A claim needs to answer the questions that was asked at the very beginning of the experiment. Here, if we were to do this experiment and collect some data, what claim can we make then? The question to this experiment is, what are the effects of lights towards the growth of the plant? Then we can claim that plants need sunlight to grow to an optimal height. Remember, Claim is made based on evidence or reasoning. I can't just make a random claim with no basis. Therefore, a normal extension to the task verb, make a claim, would be to justify the claim based on evidence and or reasoning. Justify means to provide evidence to support, qualify, or defend a claim, or to provide reasoning to explain how the evidence supports or qualifies the claim. Evidence is the data or observation gathered in the experiment that supports the claim. So a way to justify our claim that plants need sunlight to grow to an optimal height is to state that 
When plants were given sunlight, it grows taller by about 10 cm as compared to plants with no sunlight. That's the evidence right there. Then we will need to provide reasoning to support the claim by explaining why the presence of sunlight can make the plant grow taller. The reasoning has to be based on the knowledge that we have learned before. And here is about photosynthesis. An appropriate reasoning is that sunlight can provide the source of energy for plants to photosynthesize and make food for growth and development. Evaluate. Evaluate means we need to judge or determine the significance or importance of information or the quality or accuracy of a claim. For instance, student A claimed that sunlight has no effect on the growth of the plant and we need to evaluate the claim. We can clearly identify that this claim is invalid because it goes against what the data in the graph is indicating. As we progress further into the course, we will learn more about the ways to determine if the difference between these two groups are significant enough. Propose. Propose means we need to come up with something new. We could be directed to propose a new investigation based on the previous experiment or an evaluation of the design or a method. When we look at the natural phenomena, we could be proposing a new hypothesis or a new model to explain the natural phenomena based around us, based on data or evidence that we have. Last, predict or make a prediction. We need to make an educated guess on what will happen due to a change in the system. It's not just random guess, but it has to be based on what we know or the evidence. For example, we observe that the pattern that it will often rain whenever there's cloud in the sky. So, we can make a good prediction that it will rain if we observe the weather to be cloudy. And that's about it. Knowing what the task verbs are is very important in doing well in your AP exam. And you can predict when I will upload my next YouTube video based on the track record. Please leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions on what my next YouTube video should be. I'm Mr. Wong and this is Wong Wong Bio. See you next time.